Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Michael's on the Heights Episcopal Church in Worcester, Massachusetts, on this first Sunday of Lent. Welcome to you and yours. So glad that we can be able to gather for the worship of God, to rededicate ourselves in this season of Lent, a season in which we will mark one year of quarantine and being unable to gather fully in person in our church. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of the toll that that takes and the way in which we are all carrying different burdens. Let us not ignore that, but instead bring that with us to this time of worship, offering up our hurts, our frustrations, our disappointments to be transformed by God. That is something that can happen in this time because we all come together and the Holy Spirit does unite us, even though we are on Facebook instead of gathered in our beloved sacred space. Uh, looking to other uh, ways of being uplifted uh, this evening and every evening, uh, a Sunday evening, uh, we have diocesan wide center in prayer. This is uh, a way of connecting with God on a new and deeper level. It works. It is powerful and has changed millions of lives and uh, changed the way that people think about prayer and God. So that is available to you every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 on Sundays. Monday night, 6.30 to 7.30, we will have our grief support group. This is for anyone who is experiencing any form of grief, whether you might have the ongoing quarantine blah and blues, uh, or if you have had a more immediate loss uh, in, in your family of a loved one, or any other uh, transition in life that is leaving you unsettled, all are welcome to a confidential space of sharing and holding uh, our pain of grief. So uh, that is 6.30 on Monday nights. All are welcome. And every day, Monday through Thursday at noon from 12 until 12.15, 12.20, we have noonday prayer where we follow the simple office uh, that's in our prayer book, uh, a little of scripture, some psalms, some set prayers. It's a great way to check in in the middle of the day. Again, Monday through Thursday via Zoom. If Zoom is not your thing, and that's completely okay, I know it's a struggle. Wednesdays, our church is open for individual uh, devotion. Uh, you can come in and find a, a place and spread out uh, and be in our sacred space enjoying uh, the presence of God in silence and uh, pray or read whatever you wish to do. Just enjoy the stained glass windows. That's Wednesday mornings from uh, nine to one and uh, Wednesday evenings from six to eight. Again, all are welcome. Uh, this week also special uh, kickoff on Wednesday. We begin our Lenten uh, uh, adult formation series. Uh, it's going to be led by Deacon Diane, who will be teaching us all. We will be uh, offering again a program that has been uh, created by the Brothers of Society of St. John the Evangelist, our uh, monastery in the Episcopal Church. It's right down in Cambridge. And they create these marvelous programs to help us uh, go deeper in our faith. This one is on different forms of prayer. How do we pray differently? If prayer has been a struggle for you, uh, know that maybe you just haven't found your way of praying to God. And so the brothers will help us explore uh, different ways of engaging to God, opening to God. Uh, so this will be led by Deacon Diane and uh, myself, and uh, that will begin this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Again, via Zoom. The link should uh, go out if it hasn't already. Thanks to everybody who participated in our uh, Mardi Gras pancake supper. That was great to see, uh, especially our youngest Christians, and to be able to gather together and have uh, the story of Mardi Gras and pancake eating and costumes and fantastic. Uh, and I hope everybody also at this point has received their Ash Wednesday prayer cards with the ashes and the prayer and my pastoral letter that we sent out last week. Uh, if you have not received it, please let us know. We can get it to you. Maybe we had an old address for you. Or if you're new, uh, we would love to uh, send you uh, these devotional items to help uh, deepen your faith and bring you into closer uh, relationship with God on this Lenten journey that we are all on. Lastly, I hope everybody saw the great article 
uh, in the Telegram and Gazette uh, this past week on uh, Marie's mission. And a really nice feature, especially on this, uh, the story uh, of, of Sarah Galvin, our executive director and fellow parishioner, and uh, the tragedy that gave birth uh, to Marie's mission. Uh, we all know, because we have seen and been a part of that radical story, and we uh, know the goodness uh, that we are all doing for our neighbors. So um, this is great because it brings more eyes and minds and hearts to the crucial ministry that Marie's mission is offering. Uh, and it gets the word out there uh, to God's glory and in Marie's memory. So uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's on our Facebook page. Uh, definitely a, a bright spot in these hard days. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan, make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations, and as thou knowest their several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living, and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, 
This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you have I in you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to, to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Christ also suffered for his sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an ap appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came down from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our faith, uh, like all of the great religions of the world, portrays our journey as having both components that we yearn for, things that we wish, that we desire, that we are aiming towards, that we hope to be able to attain, and also provides for us uh, some pretty solid reminders of uh, what happens when we begin to fall away or to go off the path, uh, the suffering that can happen and be compounded for ourselves and for others which we, of course, uh, call sin and judgment. So on one part uh, of our journey, we focus on uh, the carrot, as it were. And on the other parts of the journey, we sometimes focus on the stick, right? 
eternal life, life without boundaries, God's love for us now and always, and also the consequences of our um, doings and not doings and the way in which that affects the world. And that's often a stick. And so sometimes for many of us, as we come into Lent, the season in which uh, we now find ourselves, we think of this as the season where we remember the stick, uh, whether that is looking back to the judgments of uh, God, the judgments that are recorded over and over again in the Old Testament, or it is our own deep inner introspection in the form encouraged by St. Paul and indeed Jesus himself. We focus on the, the kind of regulation, the motivation, the thing that we're trying to avoid, right? Well, this Lent, there's a lot going on. And a lot of us are suffering in ways that we haven't before. It's not equally distributed. Different people uh, are handling this differently. They have different resources. Different communities have been struck uh, by both the, the quarantine measures and the virus itself. To say nothing of all the other issues that we are faced with in our country today. And each of us as individuals, too, struggling. So this Lent, I'm inviting us all to let go of the stick. Let's let go of the sense that this is going to be a time of nudging ourselves or prodding ourselves or being rough on ourselves in any way. Yes, the spiritual path can always benefit from a introspective gaze with criticality at times. But this is not one of those times. So I invite us to a Lent of the carrot following the carrot, following that which is guiding us deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into God. Because here's the secret. At the end of the day, in God's almighty love and mercy and glory, it's all carrot and no stick. So let's focus on that. Let's keep that hope alive within us. It's that hope that we are reminded of in our Old Testament reading today from Genesis. God's promise to Noah in the form of the rainbow in the sky. That God's judgment, again, this big, big stick, is not going to come in that form of the terrible water again. In fact, as uh, the letter from Peter reminds us, and of course the story of Jesus' own baptism, water becomes the main element through which we enter into the redeemed life of Jesus Christ in our baptism. So it becomes this symbol, what was once a symbol of, again, the stick becomes the carrot. There's this transformation. And the reminder of that is the refracting of light through the water. Do you ever think about that? The water itself becomes redeemed because God's light shines through the water to refract the rainbow, to show us the spectrum of beautiful colors in our world. This is the sign of God's promise for each and every one of us that it's going to be the carrot. I wonder what might be a sign in your life. As a reminder that God is with you, that God has given you a promise to guide you through. One of uh, our beloved parishioners, I know, has a very strong connection to seeing cardinals. Because every time he sees a cardinal, he believes that he is seeing his wife gazing back at him, who has gone beyond and is now with God. And so the cardinal is the opportunity for him 
to remember how much God loves him and that God is there for him even as he grieves, giving him this glimpse of his wife, this memory of the love that they shared together. So I wonder for you on this morning, as we begin our Lenten journey, what is your cardinal? What is your rainbow? What is this one simple symbol that every time you might see it, it would remind you of how much God loves you? And indeed, that God is transforming even that which seems terrible, the terribleness of the flood, the waters that could not be contained, into something new and something beautiful, the shining of light, the refracting of the glorious colors of creation. So what is that symbol for you of God's transformation, God's redeeming love? How will it be the carrot that you seek on these weeks of our journey? How will it guide you to our ultimate destination? Deeper and deeper in love, eternal love. With our Savior Christ, and with each and every one of our brethren. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the Holy Word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess the holy name and may agree in truth, truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Dave, our rector, and Diane, our deacon, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer the holy sacraments. And to, the, to all thy people give the heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, the Congress and Supreme Court, Charlie, our governor, and Joseph, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, 
that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those on our prayer list. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved Thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are, are truly sorry, sorry and we, we humbly, humbly repent. repent. For the, the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, Christ have, have mercy on us and forgive us, us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith Turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us share this peace one with another. <laughs> peace. Yay, peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto Almighty God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all of the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenius Uncelio Terra Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord, and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for this coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we early, earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, 
Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, for it is by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Annus Dei, Quintolis Peccato Mundi, Miserere Nobis. Annus Dei, Quintolis Peccato Mundi, Miserere gifts of God for the people of God. Blessed are those who trek the travail to come to this holy altar. Now let us all with one accord in company with the angels past keep in his temptation and his past. Your love, O Lord, 
Let us pray together the post-communion prayer as it appears in our bulletins. In union, O dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Oh, let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. Amen. And now, may the blessing of God Almighty be upon you and upon all whom you know and love and care for. May we all walk these days of Lent together, leaning on one another, following after Christ who has set the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.